This is Petro again with the Rebel Stand, and with me I have Fema Legacy, who I've been trying to talk to for like ever. <laughs> no, seriously, like since March of this year, maybe, possibly. Mm -hmm. Elusive bastards. <laughs> <laughs> like Bigfoot, what? man. You see us every once in a while. <laughs> I'm also an introvert, so that's a problem. <laughs> but so is majority. Most of us all. are. <laughs> This works then. So thanks guys for just jumping on here with me real quick and talk to me about goals, dreams, passions, and purpose. Because <laughs> that's how I roll. I'm not a radio station. <laughs> Make sure if I have those things. I gotta see it. Yeah. So, <laughs> speaking of which, what got you started in the music? Like individually or even as a group? Uh, for me personally, uh, my dad was always big into music. He owned his own music store for like 30 years, sold guitars, drums, all that stuff. He played in a couple bands. He was a drummer though. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Shit, I played yeah, yeah. bass actually for quite a while right in on. like death metal bands. So yeah, I kind of made a hop in genre with this one. <laughs> White face Hello. paint. Black eyeliner, you know, <laughs> getting lost in the woods. <laughs> not, not black metal. Definitely. Oh, this man don't There's even know his sub genre. <laughs> yeah, so. there is though. But how about everybody Sarcasm. else? Uh, Someone. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, I don't know mm -hmm. that, but... It doesn't matter. All right. Uh, well, I, I started like my brother got a guitar and I was playing drums. Like me and him were trying to start something, but that never happened. And then, then I took his guitar and I just learned everything. And then from there, I just kept with it, stuck with it. And then, and then, as a group, we all, like, basically everyone Craigslist except for except Chad over here. I, I, I know all about that guy. Trust me. <laughs> I'm in on that one. <laughs> I got the end. Talk to you about that. I've talked to you before. I think I might know I knew him before. No. Um, but what about the music? Like, the genre specifically. So, I'm old school, but 80s metal, right? So, we got a lot of backslash about metal scene and metal music. What about that draws you to that particular genre? Um, well, I, I didn't exactly start super heavy. I kind of started with like corn and Lincoln Park. Yeah, I started with Underoath. It does have corn so heavy. Uh, well, not as <laughs> heavy not. as some other things. <laughs> well, um... But new, like new metal and I used to listen to fucking Alien Ant Farm and Chevelle okay. and shit like that. Yeah, <laughs> I, was, I started with like Pantera and shit and Lamb of God. See, I kind of switched over. I was the, the 90s kid listening to like 90s alternative. 311's my all-time favorite band, oh, right. so really big into stuff like that. Right. And then kind of Corn came yeah, out, then guys? Slipknot yeah. kind of transitioned me towards the metal thing. I mean, 2010, I was kind of really big in like the whole reggae scene. I was in a reggae band and then... Somewhere, <laughs> somewhere over there, I kind of crossed the line. I was like, I really want to play metal. And then from that point, uh, I was in a band for about four or five years in Fredericksburg and then kind of went down to the Richmond scene and then ended up back here. Yeah, right on. Anybody else? I, pretty much the same as him. <laughs> except, for, except for minus the reggae. The I was stuff. like, in middle school, I was listening to rap pretty much Oh, the whole time, and then like me and my brother started listening to like Avenged yeah. Sevenfold and stuff like that. And then I went yeah. to Slipknot, and then after that, uh, <laughs> Suicide Silence and White Chapel really got me into the heavy, heavy stuff. And then after that, it just snowballed. I was yeah. at Usually, when I early. say Sodom, people are like, What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was an early 2000s metalcore, like Kill Switch, As They Lay Dying, The Parkway Drive, all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, dude. Yep. Do you guys have a specific message with your song? Like, some people have a platform, they use it, they use it really well, a message with their music, with their songs specifically. Do you guys have anything like that? Um, kind of. Yeah. yeah I mean, what is it? I want to know. So, we kind of jump to different things that have to do with, uh, I guess, life experiences for us yeah. in particular. Okay. Um, like Contriver was about a whole bunch of relationship issues that I had and that all those lyrics in that song are pretty much directed at somebody that tried to manipulate me and then just leave me behind and thought they were gonna crush me mm -hmm. but I didn't let them Damn straight. and that's what Contriver <laughs> was pretty much about um, and the climb the climb is one that we really sat and focused on lyrically uh, that one's Everything. musically too we did really. uh, but that one was a mental health song yeah, which definitely. it was mostly centered around Brad's struggle with that um, okay. but I also my 
dad had really bad anxiety and depression and he eventually had several strokes and developed dementia so mental health has been big in my life as well same dude yep. it sounds pretty fair to say that mental health is a big challenge for most creators musicians of the like yeah, yeah pretty much mental so health is a little, yeah. little, little chunk of recovery you know, that kind of music stuff. is an outlet I mean, if it wasn't for music, I mean, half the musicians out there wouldn't really. Music is with therapy. Yeah, yeah it's, it wouldn't have a purpose, yeah. man. Yeah, you, know, you music is grab a guitar, grab the drums, jump on the drum set, and you just play for an hour. And next thing you know, all your everything you thought about is pretty much gone away. Right. You know, so honestly, that's what. Sorry. <laughs> no, go ahead. I mean, you asked about purpose. Or, I know, speaking for me personally, the, the music is it for me. I mean, I I work a normal job too, but. Right. It doesn't mean as much to me as this does. Not at all, dude. Fair enough. Fair enough. So here's the other flip side. So one of the messages I tried to bring across to the fan base is this is not just you guys showing up doing a thing. There is a business behind it. There is stuff yeah. that needs to happen. I'm, you know, songwriting. There's merch that needs to be sold. There's a website that needs to be tour needs to be scheduled. How do you guys maneuver through that? I when they're conflict because that happens. If you tell me you don't, then I'll be like, what? Oh, <laughs> How do you guys? <laughs> 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 it, wow. it needs to be talked about because there's so many bands, and I see this all the time, that give away stuff for free, and I'm like, stop doing that. Um, <laughs> because it's a business, and you guys have And it's to, already hard enough nowadays. Right, you know it is I mean? hard yeah, enough, extremes. and you make friends with people, and they're like, but I'm your friend, and I'm like, stop. You're really our friend, you'd buy the shirt. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. We love but, you, but come on. Exactly, but there's, <laughs> there's stuff you guys have to manage on the back. There's social media, there's the money, there's all these things. Oh, How do you shit. guys maneuver through that? When there's social like, media is a job in itself. Yeah. Yeah. You God, yeah. That. Telling me. <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys maneuver through that when they're conflict? How do you get through some of the difficult conversations and challenges that you probably experience here and there? Well, I will say that, like, the whole merch thing has definitely been merch and a few other things have been a learning curve for us. Right. Yeah. I think a lot of us have been in bands that didn't really have all that much merch or any at all. Or like a little no, bit, but yeah. didn't really do that much yeah, with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So we've kind of had to learn how to control that. Yeah. Um, it's a small business. It really right, is. Right, it is. Yeah. Well, it, is it is a business. And this is pretty much my point. I love having these conversations because the fan base doesn't understand that this is a business on the back side. Yeah. yeah. Shit, we don't understand either. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're trying to figure out. Yeah, we, 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 have the, we do have those conversations with everybody. Like, hey, we'll play. We had a conversation earlier today about a new shirt. It's like, hey, so maybe how many of these shirts do we want? Do we want to go long sleeve, short sleeve? Right. What's it's like, sell? yeah, pretty much me yeah. and Sieber talking. He was saying he likes long sleeves. I was like, well, long sleeves right well, does now. Does everyone else like? Yeah. It's like, because Steve likes long sleeves doesn't mean Brad likes long sleeves. Or yeah. you like long sleeves. Or like, <laughs> like, or like, uh, yeah. like two designs. This is where I'm from. It's mostly just busy front and then nothing on the back. So we're right. so used to back and, and then everywhere long, else. Yeah. I've, across now is something on the front something on the back i literally cut the sleeves of every shirt i fucking buy because, <laughs> 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 because i like tank tops and nobody ever well, tank you. tops you know what i mean have one for, or you have to issue there. me and josh have you stick your arms out and the shirt stop halfway <laughs> <laughs> bigfoot man i think i'm short uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah What's the next move for you guys and any tour dates any songwriting any album releases what's happening well, Sunday we're actually going to record a couple with uh, Jeremy from Revenant, and uh, we do got a little run coming up, don't we? Yes, in December we're doing a run with Grave Bound in Richmond. Yes, I'm sure most people know Grave Bound at this point. Um, yeah, it's the 13th, 14th, and 15th of December. It starts in Manassas at Three Monkeys Pub and Chop House, I believe is the name. Mm -hmm. Um. And the then fourteenth hasn't been set in stone just yet. We can't really yeah, yeah, say yeah, right yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And then the fifteenth is going to be back at the Canal Club with a bunch of ugly killer, sweater, ugly sweater with ugly a bunch sweater. of ugly sweater, ugly sweater show. Ugly Christmas Tulsa, sweater show. Yeah. Savage Hands, Afterlife. Oh, it's going to be so good. I might need to buy an ugly sweater, y'all. I'll make one. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for taking the time and talking with me. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.